Good morning, folks. Slight calibration jitters on the SDO satellite. We've got some top-level science stories today and a call for Observer Ranch at the end. We're starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we'll spend just a moment here looking at the last 24 hours on our star. No sunspots, no flares, no Earth-facing filament eruptions, just a few coronal holes. The solar wind stream is easing back to ambient quiet levels right now, along with geomagnetic conditions, as we await the streams from those openings. We're heading right over to Malaysia for a geo event. Tidal waves smashed the northern coastal area, causing evacuations and destroying homes. Luckily, most even had time to gather critical items before their exodus. Let's ease into the science news with a very, very bright place to be. When you've got three stars and you orbit one at extremely small distance, you're going to need those sleeping masks covering your eyes to get any semblance of dark. A new survey of red dwarf stars tells us a lot about what's hiding in the dark in the nearby galaxy. Folks, it's not just our solar system that's surrounded by these. We cannot see cold dwarf stars if they are far away, but this density here around us is the true density of the entire galaxy, which only begins to give you an idea of exactly how much they are missing in their models. Now remember, there are even more rogue planets than there are dwarf stars. Brain explosion. Oh, sorry, that's a magnetar explosion. They have identified a gamma signature from a nearby galaxy. It was a tremendous spike in photon energy, and they have determined that its spread is due to how the eruption shockwave material exited the star and interacted with the surrounding medium. This caused a dispersion of the signals, and that is actually what allowed them to realize it firmly fit their magnetar burst model for short gamma bursts rather than any other. Now, where's my climate axe? Number one science journal on Earth, reporting what we've been waiting for almost a decade. You melt the polar ice, you're going to trigger an ice age. We've seen over 20 papers on this truth riding with the North, but this is only the third or fourth on the South, and those didn't come from the journal Nature. Folks, that movie, The Day After Tomorrow, was too fast. It takes more than a week, but it's real. The finish line of global warming is an ice age. End of story. Up next, know all those people who neglected forest management and controlled burns to try to save the environment? Oops. Yes, as we've seen again dozens of times just this year, they are way underestimating the cooling power of atmospheric aerosols, but at least they're starting to realize it. Last but not least, a survey of solar forcing versus human forcing of the climate. Using geomagnetic indices rather than solar irradiance, we find the maximum global warming possible under the most sensitive models, which we've seen many times this year proven to be overkill, to be very small. And in reality, we are in for a major drop in temperatures coming soon. And this is not just because aerosols cool, CO2 sensitivity is biased, and the ice is melting at the poles to chill the rest of the world. But we had the 12,000-year maximum solar activity in the last century during global warming. The sun is easing back from its grand maximum, and we're at record low volcanic cooling, which can't last forever. Our future is cold. The sun is the master of our atmosphere, and folks, we're down to 5% stock of the textbook. We will be removing it from the store Friday night. We greatly appreciate your support. For those who expressed interest in the parcels of Observer Ranch, you should already have your initial information email. For those who wanted to help, offer services, or work to build the future home of the observers, today is the day to email ben at observatoryproject.com. But please know, you have to live nearby or find accommodations. This is not a commune, and staying at the ranch during construction is a big no. Email if you are game and able. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe because we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.